case. We talked about Carson Wentz and Dak Prescott. They're both 4-1 and one in divisional games with their only losses coming against each other. Wentz has a better touchdown to interception ratio. Dak has a better QBR and completion percentage. But let's hear from Carson. We have to win this one. You know, it's just like the last few weeks. You know, I think everyone knows that. Um, you know, obviously we've had uh, a couple emotional wins um, the last few weeks. And, um, you know, as, as leaders and coaches as well, they've done a great job of just making sure guys are still bought into this, in the here and now, and not dwelling on the past, not looking ahead either, um, and just going out to work. You know, this, we got our work cut out for us against a good opponent on the road. Um, and obviously if we win, we're in. So we know what's at stake. I was just actually asked, you know, how I'm feeling, and it was, um, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful. You know, I'm thankful. You know, obviously, the last, like you said, the last two years, I've been out at this point, and so um, to feel the way I do, to still be out here with, with the guys at Week 17, uh, it, it's a blessing, something I don't take for granted, and I'm excited to, to go hopefully get one more. What do we think of the sweatshirt on Carson? Duck, that's, good Christmas yeah, hoodie. Ducks I love it. Yeah, he's I a hunter, it. right? So that's, yeah. that's probably what Makes that sense. is. <laughs> All right. The color. Oh, duck purple. Purple. Oh, duck I, purple. I accept your <laughs> explanation. I get it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't take my eyes off. I wasn't even listening to what he was saying. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know. What did he say? I don't know. Who's right, under thanks. more Let's pressure we got. this weekend? Carson Wentz or Dak Prescott? I mean, this is a clear one for me. Who have we been talking about all week long? Who is under the most pressure? Who, most importantly, has not gotten paid yet? And that's Ooh. this guy. I'm putting a couple of them because he's going to need all his guys this weekend to win the game. Look, all the pressure's on Dak Prescott. All the pressure's on him to see if his arm is healthy, to see if he, if he can bring this team to the next level, to see if he can hit all his passes accurately down the field, to see if he can hit those open guys in stride and make big play after big play. The pressure is on Dak Prescott in comparison to Carson Wentz solely because, yes, his team is more talented, I believe, than, than the Philadelphia Eagles, at least offensively. And then when you look at the pressure to make it to the postseason and the pressure to go deep in the postseason, all the pressure is on the Dallas Cowboys. And who's the quarterback of that team? Dak Prescott. And guess what? I'm jumping right with you, but you, mm -hmm. you left, you missed a few guys. I missed the game. Yeah, it's going to take all 11. It's going to take, take all 11 of those Cowboys out there on the field for Dak to mm -hmm. kind of take that that pressure off him to get this W. You talk about going deep into the playoffs. That but, would be new for Wentz too, but, right? It was Foles the last couple says, of That's true. Right? Who has the more pressure to win this weekend? Not necessarily the Super Bowl overall. And, and I'm just saying, you know, I understand that they have more talent. I understand he isn't the one that doesn't have the contract. But this is also the team that's been a little bit more on a roll too. And he's such in a unique circumstance from the standpoint he's like the only quarterback who's had the backup basically yep. win the Super Bowl. That's a very very unique thing that he has to cast off mentally, you know, especially in that city with all that pressure. So when you're talking about winning this weekend, they win and they're in, and you just have to, you know, be the best in the NFC East this weekend. I don't know. I'm like, eh, 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 eh. They're going to right He's playing really well right now. I'm Steve, what do you I'm think? Right there. I, hey, he ain't got nobody to talk. Uh, Carson Wentz has all the pressure in the world yeah. because he's he's it's in front of him. You think Philadelphia is a nice city where takes care of quarter, takes care of quarterbacks that are struggling? I mean, he's been crushed, and look what he's done. He righted himself a halftime of the Giants game. He has been all pro, all world in the last few weeks, and now he's in a position now to take this team who knows where. They have to win this week. There's no question. Dax, Thank you, Dax Steve. Pressure. Appreciate he you. faced the pressure. He faced the pressure last week, the week before, and they failed. They're out. They're done. He's not going to get paid. It's all a disaster. That pressure's gone. Wentz is now on the spotlight. He's got to win this week. Thank Carson, you. Carson and, got and his no, money. No, Dak hasn't point. got his money yet. Yeah, he's but, playing for money. He's yeah, playing for but, livelihood. But he's playing for more than that. The circumstance is unique because right, right. he has a person, the backup, that actually won. Yes, yeah, we paid Dak city. Prescott. Trying to live up to his backup. Can we pay Dak Prescott? Enough of the quarterbacks. Nope. Right, go on, okay, go on, okay, okay. We're going to talk about a running back. Okay. Seahawks ran out of running backs Ooh. last Sunday, so they signed a couple Monday, and one was their old buddy, Marshawn Lynch. Here is Pete Carroll and some other Seahawks on the reunion. In case you're wondering, I don't have my 24 jersey underneath my sweatshirt here, okay? You can't describe him in one word, so it's, uh, I definitely need a dictionary. I'm excited to have him back, excited to, to see him run the ball. And uh, like I said, you know, whenever he puts his jersey and pads on, uh, he's a guy that no one wants to tackle, no matter how long he's taking off. What brought you back this time? Happy holidays. Merry New Year. Y'all have a great day. It's a great feeling to be back. Thank you. 
<laughs> mid-season <laughs> form there. I that's love it. For sure. I love it. I I hope that love Marshawn that. never changed, dog. Please stay the same. I love never it. change. All right, so we asked it at the top of the show. Beast or bust? Marshawn Lynch is Dan, I'm going right to it because I'm not a type of guy to play any games here. I think he's going to be a beast. <laughs> okay. I think that when, it, when you're asked... What they're asking him to do is control the line of scrimmage, make some big plays in the run game, control the line of scrimmage in third and short yardage. That's what he's there to do. Make sure he gets that third and two, third and three, get that first down. Russell Wilson, keep that defense off balance. I think that's the biggest thing is now teams are going to be coming in, especially this week against the 49ers, coming in, wanting to cue on him and cue on that running game. If he can be able to bring that positive yardage and that big play capability, I know he's had some time away, that just means he's fresh. And at the running back position, a guy like Marshawn Lynch, I think he's going to come in and have a major impact. Now, will he have 120 rushing yards? Probably not. But will he have 50, 60 tough, hard-fought, crucial, substantial yards in a time of the game where they need it most? I think so. I agree. I can't say Marshawn Lynch was saying but I just can't say it. I can't go. say bust. He was a beast. I played against him. I know how strong he is. And he's 33 years old. That's not old. That's not that old. He's not a running back. He's good. He's good. Definitely. He's still that's strong. Man, that's a man age. He might right be a little there. heavier, but it might help him. He might be even more beastly. I'm going beast. Well, let me let I'm going oh, beast. Yes. I was going to ask Steve. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Ask Steve. Go ahead. All right, go ahead. Steve, do you disagree? Oh, Josie, I want to hear what you. Oh, All right, Josina, he Josie. wants Josina to go first. <laughs> Listen, all I was going to say is I have seen prior to the year that Marshawn Lynch came to the Raiders. Do you remember that was the year that we saw him riding camels? He was all over mm -hmm. the place. And he still came back to Oakland and gave you 800, 900 plus rushing yards riding camels in Egypt, for God's <laughs> sake. So it doesn't matter. We saw him on Twitter. He's been working out with his trainer for two weeks. He can, he's got a soul food. Right? I talked to his mom uh, yesterday. She was telling me he got a new soul food restaurant in Oakland, but he's been working out, trying to eat right, working with his trainer. So I believe he's going to drop more. More than 60. I believe he might even give you 70, 80 just off of Ooh. juice. Just off of just that Marshawn juice, period. Steve Young rolling on Marshawn Joe, here he in Bristol. That, what do you got? I mean, at some level, is this not the NFL where you can't just go rest for 14 months and just show up <laughs> and dominate? Look, I get it. But I will tell you, he's already beasted mm -hmm. because he changed the narrative from Sunday night when they'd lost all their backs. They lost their tackle. Yep. They looked like there's no way they're going to beat the 49ers. And they changed the narrative. And football, because there's games every seven days, there's all this stuff that happens in between that really affects what happens at game day. And so they changed that narrative. The next day, all of a sudden, there's excitement. Beast mode. The whole city's, like, going crazy. They'll be, it'll erupt. Now, if he can give them anything, that is a, he's already done what he needed to do to help the Seahawks Se Se get through the week. If he can actually do what Josina said, that place will <laughs> fall down. It will just collapse under the enormity. Steve, I'm ready to play, man. He's 33. I'm ready yeah. to play, man. I mean, I'm, I'm saying, Victor, there's no way you, get warmed up. you can be off for 14 months and come back and dominate. I just, there's no way. Yeah, dominate yeah, may be a stretch. Can I just introduce this, y'all, because this is actually my game for this weekend. They're calling for a 70% chance of rain. Oh, boy. Sunday. Oh, so I think boy. he's going to have some more opportunities. That's why I think it is possible for him to get in that 78 It's going to turn into a beast it, mode it is, It's going to be a rain game. Game even more so, and uh, and I, I think they're gonna my feel guy it. more lines. Uh, oh, now, now you want to make one big because it just looks good. Make it big. Yeah. Yeah. Keep putting lines up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about that Carson Wentz duck sweatshirt, <laughs> but he didn't. It just felt like somebody popped a balloon in my calf. It was kind of scary. Ingram continues to say he's pretty confident he will be ready for the Ravens' playoff opener this week. The Ravens will be facing the Steelers. Quarterback Mason Rudolph headed to. Injured reserve after suffering a shoulder injury against the Jets. Rudolph's season ends with a league-low 34 quarterback rating. Here's Coach Mike Tomlin on the state of the Steelers. This is not the time of year for talk. You either do or you don't do. Um, and obviously Sunday we didn't do. Um, like we talked about also uh, after the game, uh, it's very specific how we have to engineer victory uh, in the current state that we're in. So the segment's called Sounds Good, Sounds Bad, but for the sake of this bite, I'm going to say Sounds Good or Sounds Like Doo-Doo. What do you guys think? <laughs> um, I think this sounds good. I mean, he is right. This is a time of year where you have to show and prove. This is a time of year where you find out what your team is made of. You kind of rally the troops, get who's healthy, get who's out there, and able to, you know, put this team in the best light and put this team in the best position to win at every single position on the football field. 
and let it all hang out. You're not saving it for anything. You're not saving it for the next game because there might not be a next game. You want to make sure that you put all your eggs in this basket right now, today, for this game that's coming up on Sunday, and then see where it, see where it takes you. And that's the big thing, right? They need help now. They need Tennessee to lose, even if they win, or else they're they're out. Absolutely, but it sounds good from the standpoint. I, I just love his leadership tone. You know, he, he this is you play all of these games in the regular season to get to this point and have a chance, whether it's by on your hand or not on your hand. And I just like the fact that he's setting the tone. All men got to rise up, and and it's either put up or ship out. I agree. Exactly. I agree 100%. Things that you could say. No, you just see the way he talks to the media. I guarantee he's saying the same exact things to the mm. players, and they're listening to him because he's doing. He's done a great job this season coaching that team up. Always on message, for sure. The New Orleans Saints listed quarterback Drew Brees on their injury report this week with knee inflammation, but Coach Sean Payton told reporters Brees is fine, and they just put him on the injury report in case he had to wear a sleeve on the knee for practice and that they fully expect Breeze to be ready to go this week against the Panthers. Here is Peyton. We're full speed ahead winning this game. When you go through the different situations or scenarios, uh, you know, there's ones that exist where you could be the one, the two, or, or certainly be the three. That's significant relative to, you know, the opportunity to possibly have a bye and, and not have to play the first round. We're treating it much differently than maybe a year ago where we had secured a uh, you know, we kind of knew where, where we were. Rob, sounds good or sounds bad? No, it sounds good. I, I like that mentality. They're trying to win the football game, and that's what you're trying to do every single week. But in this case, they want to win the football game because they want to set themselves up to not have to play one extra playoff game, which once you hit the playoffs, the teams, everything steps up just a little bit more. When you're in the preseason, it's okay. Then you hit the regular season, steps up a notch. You hit the postseason, it's every single game is a battle and you come out of the game you're beat up you're sore you're tired it takes you a few more days to recover so i like the fact that they want to go and get this top seed because of the fact they need the bye week you have older players veteran players i'm sure drew needs that extra week to rest his knee if he has a little issue there so i like the fact they're going to go play because you, you look you can't play scared in this league. you got to go out there take it and it's the fate of football things happen i know that but if you try to rest guys, you might mess up your mojo, get knocked down to a lower seed, and you lose anyway in the playoffs. Saints are 6-1 and one this year on the road, but that still doesn't mean you want to end up in Green Bay or Seattle in a January game. We all know how those things have gone for other teams. That have